Hi guys, welcome to Pixel Affair. It's Kobe here. And in today's video, we are going to see how we will make this um, looping connected objects um, or clones using Cinema 4D's MoGraph, right? So this was an image which was originally um, created by Cartesian Car Caramel using, I don't know if I get the name right, but he used um, Geometry Notes and Blender to create this, right? But let's see how we will use MoGraph to create um, the same effect in Cinema 4D. So I'm in Cinema 4D and I'm using Cinema 4D R26, but you should be able to do this further down in any, almost any version of Cinema 4D. And that's when there is, um, I'm actually using a plugin or a script, free script, which is called PileUp, originally by um, atata.com, right? And if you come here, he has a lot of interesting Cinema 4D stuffs here, and it really works. It's very, very useful. So this one is called Pile Up, a Cinema 4D effect that he created, right? So you can just download it and bring it into Cinema 4D. It's like a Cinema 4D project file. And what it basically does is that if I create, let's say, a cube, I can create several objects. I'll, I'll create a cube and maybe a sphere, or even, uh, let's say, another cube. I'll make it that one even smaller. And now I can come in here and create a clone clone I'll make them a child of the clone I can see we have um great but immediately I come into my asset I have it saved here right I I drag and drop it into my scene and I'll select my effector uh, my clones come to effector tab and then drag and drop in the pile up you can see instantly it takes them all and pile them pile them up going vertically upwards and make sure they all stay within their bounding box without intersecting or anything of that sort same with separate distance and everything so that's what it basically does so if i take let's see the, the sphere and make it big you can see it's pushing the other cubes and everything to make space so that it don't intersect right and you can select the pile up coming to the settings and add gap and everything if you want you can also change the axis to any other axis you want right another thing is that it also works with something like the random effect so if i come into my select my clones and come into my effect test and choose um random our uh, disable position it works with the scale so i if i enable increase the scale you can see some of the spheres some are tall and some are some have been stretched and some have been squashed but if i select the clone and make sure the random comes before the pile up so i drag the run uh, pile up down and you can see it all stays within um its bounding box without intersecting so I'll leave a link in the description so that you can go ahead and download it, right? So let's go ahead and create a new scene and see how we will recreate um, this scene, right? So simple, all I have to do is in here, I'll create a rectangular object, um, a rectangle spline. I'll make this one like 10 and I'll make the height like 20, right? I'll add rounding to it and then, yeah, I think the rounding is fine. And I'll come into my object and I'll create an extrude make the rectangle a child of the extrude. I can actually change the plane of the rectangle to ZY, right? And I'll reduce the offsets of the extrude to like five. I'll come into the extrude, the caps, and I'll actually increase the rounding a bit. I think one, one will be fine. All right, in this case, we are cool and everything. So now I have my object created. Now we want to get our object rotating and unfortunately the pileup does not recognize um, rotation of objects. And as it's speaking, I think this whole process like within the, even without the script and everything can be done in let's say Espresso or even Cinema 4D C notes with someone who is a genius and understands the notes and stuff like that. But in this case, we want to use normal Cinema 4D. So how do we get our object point to rotate, right? And I tried several ways, right? I tried um, straight um, effectors, Alembic, I tried connect everything that I think I thought of I tried and still wasn't working But then let you let's go ahead and see how we will do it So all I have to do is to, I'll make this one editable. So I'll press C to make it editable. I don't need all these um, Tags right. It's not necessary, but I don't need them and now I want to rotate I want it to rotate 360 but I want the points rather to rotate not the object itself but the only way I figured out I could do it, I tried everything, morph effectors, like I said, it didn't work, is to use another deformer. So what I'll do is I'll call this one animated um, 
make it and I'll create a copy of it. So I'll call this one like one and I'll hide the, the one. I'll select the animated and let's set, set a keyframe. So at frame zero, I'll set a keyframe on the pitch and at frame 60, I'll set it to 360, go 360. And now if I hit play, you can see it goes 360 full, right? I, I, I want it to be linear. So I come into my animation mode, I'll select this and I'll set it to linear. And I'll come into the attributes, right? I'll make sure before and after, after I set to repeat. So if I increase my frames to like say 180, and if I hit play, even after the 60 frames, you can see it rotates three times to one and it loops, right? You can see it loops. So that's everything um, I want for now. Now, because I want the point, I don't want the object itself to rotate. I use another deformer to get the point of this one um, rotating to follow the animated. So I'll go ahead and hide the animated. And now you can see you have the one which is not moving. I'll come into my effectors and the effector I used is the surface deformer. So I'll make the surface deformer a child of the one. And in the surface deformer, I come to the object tab. I'll drag and drop in the animated um, one in here and I'll hit initialize. It's set to projection, so I'll just hit initialize. And you project um, this one onto the animated one so that I hear it in all of those shenanigans. So the point is basically what's moving. So now if I hit play, and see now our one, which is now animated, is also now moving. And that's the point moving. Now I want to bake the point into animation. So first of all, I'll right click on the one, come into my Regain tags and I'll choose um, point cache, right? So what the point cache that it makes your animation or your points animation into this tag so that um, you can scrub through or something like that. So now if I select the point cache tag, come down here to the attribute, I'll say store states, I'll click on store state and it brings all these elements and I'll just click on calculate. So we'll calculate the whole thing and now I can go ahead and even disable the surface deformer and you can see the point animation has been stored in our point cache tag. Right, we are good. Now everything is fine and from here we can actually straight use it in um, our, um, how do you call it, in a cloner with the pile up, right? But I want it, I want it in keyframes and that's because I'll need the keyframe for something in my next step. So I want to bring the point cache into keyframes. So what I'll do is I'll come into my keyframes and I'll, I, I want to bring the one, but unfortunately I don't have it in here. So what I'll do is that I'll set, click anywhere, set a keyframe to any object just to get it into the scene. So I'll just click on the X-ray, set a keyframe with the X-ray. And you can see the one now has been brought in. So I just select it, come into functions, functions. And now up here you can see big object. So if I choose big object, it basically bakes your object into keyframe. If you have like something like dynamics and stuff like that, you can bake it into keyframes, like the position scale rotation. But in this case, I don't want the position, I don't want the rotation, I don't want any of the, except the PLA, points level animation. And I'll choose OK. And I can see it has baked all the points into keyframes, which will be very useful in the coming on. And what it has done is that, that it has created an, another copy for us, all right? So I'll go ahead and hide my timeline and I'll create a null object and put these two in, right? I actually create a layer here and I'll click and hold control and drag and drop it on this so that you can hide it from the VP, uh, viewport rendering and in the scene as well, object manager. So now we have only this object. So if I hit play, this is our object playing and everything is baked into keyframes. But we want another copy, a counter rotation to this one. So I'll select, in fact, let me delete the, uh, the former under this one. I'll call this one one, and I'll drag another copy, I'll call this one two, right? And we want this one to do the reverse of the rotation. So what I'll do is I'll first of all select, I'll increase my keyframes here, I'll select all of it. In fact, if I hit Control A, actually click outside here and drag to select all the keyframes 
with that's the two i make sure that object two is selected right click on these keyframes right and you can see edit i can simply choose reverse sequence and what it has done is that it has reversed my keyframe so let me make sure it's you know the la the, this keyframe is start from zero and now we are good so we can set our frame range to 180 back and everything should be fine so if i hit play now and see we have two objects counter rotating right so now with these two objects created all now i have to do is to come into my more graph man choose clones make the two of the of them a child of the clone um cloner and i can see if i hit play we've created all of this right and the next is to just bring in my pile up so i'll come into my asset browser and i'll drag and drop it into my pile up um into my scene and then i'll select my if a clone come into the attributes effect test and i'll drag and drop in the pile up and now we've we have a animation and everything is moving smoothly as we want so that's basically it now let's go ahead and do the other um rows or columns or whatever it is now let's first of all make sure come into select the clone come into object and change from grid to linear right so that you can actually count the number of clones you want so i'll just set this to i think five right and now we have five clones right going up and down all right now the next is i'll create another clone make this one a child of the clone and then in there i'll select the, the clone um i'll change it to linear as well set the y p position y to zero and increase it on x like say eight right so now i've created three copies let's make it like c6 and if i hit play you can see it's all doing the same thing but this is where the keyframes comes in handy so all i have to do is select the, this um clone object come into my effect test and i'll choose step effector right and in the step effector i'll come into the parameters it's you see skill is checked so i'll uncheck skill and i'll come down to time offset so i'll offset the time to like say let's say 10 and now if we hit play and see ah everything is basically made so now from here going we can increase the number of um counts we want and even um select the step effector even the time offset like even 15 or whatever we want and now if we hit play everything works smoothly now one thing for us to get it to loop right it's one thing we can either select the key i think the keyframes and move it make sure it starts from frame i don't know if i'll get it right but you know i think in fact let me make sure this is set to minus 30 it start from minus 30 right so I'll set it to like say minus 30 here. I know it's for sure. And then I'll bring it back to zero. Right. And now if I hit play, you see it starts somewhere here in the middle. And at frame, I think 90, we should be fine. So I'll set it to frame 90. So what we've done is that we've pushed um the keyframes that we have selected all these keyframes if you if you've not all you have to do is select all of this and make sure you selected all your keyframes and now you push it back right for like 30 frames so i, I set it to minus 30 so that i know exactly it's a hit the first frame starts at minus 30 here right but you are not going to render that part i'll start i'll make it start from rendering from frame zero and ends at frame 90 right and now if we hit play our frame zero and frame 90 should all have the same frame like same um, position everything should be the same so if i hit play everything your video or your animation should loop so that's basically how um i did this effect basically 
with the help of the plugin. And honestly speaking, I think with just Cinema 4D, Espresso, and C notes and everything, you can still do this without even the plugin um, or the script. But I, I'm not that probably genius to know how to do that for now. So I thought this would be useful. So yeah, there you have it. Um, I hope this was useful and you've learned some things from this tutorial. If there's any question, you can ask me in the comment section. And you can go ahead and follow um, or check out uh, the website I showed, atata.com. I don't know the name right, but yeah, atata.com. And he has a lot of interesting stuff. And also, um, Caramel, I don't know the name. Like, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm getting the name wrong. He used Blender, I think. He's an amazing artist. And you can check them out later. Thank you for watching. And I hope this was useful.